Okay, it's time to do some work on the man cave again. I got my toolboxes, my drills, batteries for you guys, soft drink, chocolate bar, and a bunch of new gear. After my last review for Vardor, they wanted to send me more stuff, and right this is what they sent. If you're interested in any of this stuff, make sure you check the links, as they are giving a discount for Black Friday. Today we're changing some stuff around. I'm bringing the Vardor batteries over here. I'll show you what we're going to do with that in a minute. Alright, that's number two. Anyway, so why are we doing this? I'm trying to make this building as standalone as possible. As you guys know, Adam and Phyllis are also staying up here and they're using the cabin while they're working on their property. And they have their own battery bank system. They have a, I think it's a Picron or something like that. And it's right around 300 amp hours, which is what these here are each. Um, when I put them in here, they're gonna be 600 amp hours. Um, but they like using their battery bank so they can take it with them, stuff like that. And the way this building was set up before, it would, in a sense, leach off the cabin because the powerful lights, the TV was all coming off that cabin where the lighting, that light and that light, which are not on right now because there's no batteries in here, ran off 12 volt. So now we're gonna put the Vardor batteries in here as well as what's in this box, which is some more stuff from Vardor. They have sent me two things. First one is a 70 amp 12 volt charger for lithium batteries. That is a massive amount of power going from this charger into the batteries. I'm looking forward to that. This is more powerful than the charger I have in the house because the max that will do right now is 60 amps. So but that's also a 24 volt system. So, and it comes with the plug to plug it in and an Anderson connector to connect it all together. And then we have the second item. They also sent a 12 volt, 2000 watt converter. And that will literally make this cabin here stand alone. No, yeah, it's got an on off switch that can mount somewhere. Anyways, we're gonna get these batteries in here and start hooking all this up. Oh yeah, we're good. Now I've got to get my headlamp because I can't see down here and I need to be able to see. Good Lord, it looked like a bomb went off in here. So this is the battery charger from Bardor. It's uh, pretty beefy. Cables are not cheesy. And this is a 14.6 volt, 70 amp LiPo 4 battery charger. It says that it will take 100 to 240 voltage, 50 or 60 hertz, up to 16 amp max. Output is 14.6 volts, 70 amps at 1022 watts. So I'm curious to see how much power it actually uses when it's plugged in. And it does come with Anderson connectors, which I kind of like that. So let's get this thing hooked up. Normally what I would do is I would use a bus bar. Unfortunately, I do not have a bus bar that will fit with this system today. So until I can get some more cable and make some more connectors, we're going to use what they sent for today. And I do have Anderson connectors this size. Just saying. I have to find a place to mount the end of the charge controller. I think I'm just going to put it against the wall back here. I got some screws here. I did. Did you guys hide them on me? I think you did. Hmm. One moment, please. Oh, there they are. Ah, thanks. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this one here. I'm going to screw it into the log right here. All right. 
right, so that's that part. I have the connector here. You're gonna start making all our connections. And this is where I'd rather have bus bars, but until I get the bus bars made, this is what we're gonna have to do. And all this stuff is does have breakers on it, so I'm not really worried about something happening. All right, so this is the inverter. This is one of their Vartorers own. It is a 2000 watt inverter, and it should work more than fine for what we've got to do in this building. This really just runs my computer, my TV when I'm editing, my 3D printer, which doesn't use a lot of power, as well as my laser engraver, which doesn't use a lot of power. I could probably run everything in this building and not have to worry about messing up this machine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put it against the back wall so I can see my display. And there is a display that will come out to the front and I'll mount it out here. So let me get this put in. And we're just gonna do it right below the uh, charger. All right, so we've got part way done. Let's get the inverter hung. All right, the inverter's hung. What we're gonna do, we have two shorties, two longs. So we're gonna connect the negatives first. The way I'm gonna have to do this is this way like this. I'm gonna have three connectors on here. I'm going to work, guys. So now, that part's all done. Now we got to get the battery actually hooked up to the inverter and to the charger. Try to turn it on. There's the button. Oh, it came on. So 120 volts, 60 hertz, zero watts going out. Battery's at 13.3. It is 0.7 Celsius. Mm. And that's how I turn it on and off right there the first time. And this actually, I can do um, hardwire or plugged in. So what I'm gonna wind up doing is once I get it all set up, I'm gonna hardwire it into my system. this back through we're not going to put a load on it today because I've got to do some stuff and we're going to have to charge the battery up we'll shut it off and it's off that simple it is three degrees here in the cabin and I need to get this building warmed up so I can charge my batteries so we're going to turn the whipper row on and get it heated up in here on we're on 10 we'll put it on 10 for a little while we have four liters of fuel so it's 50 percent we'll see how long that lasts all right i was wrong on my time earlier it was about 10 to 5 it is now 6 16 and the temperature was 30 degrees when we started we're at 59 now 
So, I need to check the temperature of the batteries because with lithium, you generally don't want to start charging until they're a certain temperature. You don't want to hurt the batteries. Sometimes the BMS is set up where it will not charge at all until it gets to a certain temperature. So I'm going to bring up the app. We're going to check the temperature. Above freezing. So we should be able to start charging these here by like 7 or so. I like to make sure they're comfortable before I start charging them. We'll be back. It is now 9.07 and it is... 79.7 degrees in here. I gotta turn this thing down. And we have used two liters of fuel in that short of time period. The inverter is showing that it is 28C on there, so that's plenty warm. All right, so the cabin has warmed up quite a bit. And I'm gonna plug in the charger so we can get some batteries charged up here. I had to let the cabin warm up first so the batteries would charge properly. Because every now and then, if it's cold out, it'll put them into a slow state of charge so it doesn't damage the lithium, which is great. But I'd rather get it done in one shot. So that's why I ran the diesel heater. So let's plug it in. And it's already kicking on. And it's going to go through its cycling. As you can see, it's charging at 60 amps going in. Fifteen point seven volts. At 69.1 or 2 amps going into the battery. So let's look at the app and see what it shows. These are self heating batteries and they will keep themselves above freezing, but it will also limit the amount of charge that it can take as it starts to charge. That is the main reason why I waited until they get closer to 40 degrees before I started charging them. So All right, so for giggles, you guys, I'm actually going to put plug in my watt meter and we'll see how much power this thing is actually going to draw. So right now, with this going as it is, it is drawing 1133 watts, 121 volts, and it's pushing through 9.34 amps. That is the new system from Vardor that included a 2000 watt inverter, which this building will never come close to using that much power. Even with both my Macs on, my old iMac 22, my MacBook Air, and the 55 inch TV, as well as the whip row all plugged in, I'm lucky if I'm drawing 200 watts. So that was actually an ideal size system. So if I need to use it for something else, I can do it. Like if you look over my shoulder, I've still got my 3D printer right there and I've also got a laser engraver there and I have another laser engraver coming still. Anyways, that's it for this week guys. Thanks for joining us. I hope you like this and make sure you look down below because there will be some discount codes for these products from Vardor. You have a great day. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.